It's championship Friday around the area here in high school boys basketball. And we got a big matchup for you tonight in the birdcage in Pettisville as the Buckeye Border Conference titles on the line as the Blackbirds entertain the Striker Panthers. Hello again, everyone, alongside my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts, partner. I'm going to take a line from you right from the start. Where else would you <laughs> rather be right here, right now, filled up birdcage, ready for the BBC Championship? Oh, partner, I pulled in at about 5.20, and the place was starting to fill up then. They are excited about the BBC, to say the least. Big matchup tonight. We'll tell you what's at stake. It's pretty simple. Both teams come in 6-0 and in conference play, this being their final conference game of the year. So winner take all as we take a look at the BBC standings. Winner is going to climb atop the BBC and finish 7-0. and There will not be a co-champ this year. Last will year not. there was a co-champ. It's going to be an individual champ, and uh, really it's a heavyweight fight here tonight. Both coaches absolutely excited. The communities have showed out in a big way. This is going to be a fun one. Yeah, two teams who uh, kind of called themselves the kingpins of the Buckeye Border Conference and Pettisville in striker. Take a look at uh, Pettisville. They rolled off... Uh, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. Did not win last year. Remember, last year was shared between uh, Eden and North Central. And now the Blackbirds want to get back on top of and claim uh, the uh, Buckeye Border Conference Championship once again. Yeah, both teams, just uh, regular uh, guys that visit at the top, uh, perching at the top of the BBC. Mm -hmm. So it, it should be a fun one. And uh, really, Randy, when you look at the matchups, it's almost mirror images. There's going to be so much great matchups. So many great matchups in this. Height on both teams, mm -hmm. great shooting on both, and great coaching on both. It's going to be so much fun. I'm excited that we're here. That's yeah, for a striker, and we'll talk a little bit in depth. The Panthers, just a couple of moments, they're looking for their first outright championship in the Buckeye Border Conference since 2001. Shared a title with Pettisville in 2019. Shared one with Pettisville 2015. Shared one with Pettisville in 2005. But as far as an outright championship, it's been 20 plus years. And for a place like Stryker, and if you went around and asked some of the old timers around here, some of the people been around this program, this community for a long, long time, that is way too long. Well, you remember in 2019, it was a Glockness monster. Chase Glock carried them. He was a heck of a ball player. Went on to play at Defiance. He was a really big ball player, tall guy. Well, they have another big guy inside, and that's Elijah Juilliard at six foot six. He scores about ten points a game for them. And he's going to have to be big because on the other side, huh, there's height there as well. Mm -hmm. Jacoby, Caden Jacoby at six foot nine. It is a battle of twin towers inside tonight. Let's talk a little bit about the Blackbirds of Pettisville coming in at thirteen and six under seventh year. Head coach Brian Leppelmeyer, who recently went over 100 career wins. You talked about Jaden uh, Jacoby, or Caden Jacoby, excuse me. You see the starting lineup there on your screen. All Jacoby's done so far this year is give the Birds a double double 17 points, 11 rebounds a night. Now, he is a guy that has the opportunity to play at the next level, 6'9, athletic, and you look at him, you're like, boy, this guy's going to put on some more weight. Coaches love him at the next level, and you see why. A partner, he does such a great job not only scoring, but defensively. He has that uncanny ability to hold his ability on the ground, wait for the shot to go up, and then go out and get the block. Does a great job of defending the paint. He's going to be a big problem for Stryker tonight. Another uh, score for the Blackbirds, Joey Ripke at 10 points, 5 rebounds a game, and one of the unsung players, someone that uh, might not be atop the scoring column, but someone that will have an effect in this contest, Jarrett Beck, he seems like to be a guy we always talk about each and every time we come and see the Blackbirds play. Eight and a half points, just a shave over three and a half rebounds a game, but it seems like his points, his rebounds, his assists come at big times of the basketball game. Well, it's going to be one of those moments, too. Like Both teams, the top three will kind of cancel each other out. Who's going to be that fourth guy that kind of steps up, right? The unsung hero? Maybe it is going to be Jarrett Beck, but you brought up Joey Ripke. A coach's son, remember his son, his, co his dad coached at Delta. The Delta yeah. girls did such a great job. He is so well-schooled fundamentally. He has developed, remember as a freshman, he was a catch and shoot kind of guy, no longer. He can put the ball on the ground, he can attack, and at six foot five, he is a load <laughs> to have to deal with. Also beginning to get some of his dad's height as well, yep. as you mentioned, it's really gonna pay off. All right, let's turn our attention now to the uh, Panthers of Stryker coming in at 11 and nine, three and two in their last five. They played some tough competition, led by Elijah Juilliard at 10 points per game, but it's a very balanced effort, but some quality basketball players for the Panthers. Now you talked to Tyler Woolis, and 
He will just go crazy talking to you about Levi Barnum and his leadership ability. He said flat out, Levi Barnum is their MVP. And he's kind of a matchup nightmare as well. At six foot four, can put the ball on the ground, go inside and in rebound and play defense there as well. So he is the guy that really stirs the drink for them. But to me, partner, the guy that has made the difference in all the world for them is Daniel Donovan, number 10, the sophomore at six foot three hitting at 36% from behind the arc. Big change, they played early in the year, these two teams, mm -hmm. right? 38-36, Pettisville. Donovan played sparingly, wasn't really ready for primetime minutes, only had one shot in that game. He is gonna be a huge deal on how Pettisville deals with him. Was literally gonna be the next thing on my notes. We have everything lined up what we're gonna talk about. And nice. you, you took the next thing away from me. <laughs> well, you, was, by you, the you way, stole my second, opener. Yeah, that's so, true, I so, guess. So, Turn around is fair yeah. play. Second meeting, as Miles said, this year between these two. The first one, a non-league affairs. The Buckeye Border Conference has gone to a one-time through with the addition of Holgate and going to eight uh, teams in the conference. As Miles had mentioned, 38-36. That was back on December the 1st. Striker led 25-15 at the half. 34-28 after three. Sean Atkins had a couple of free throws with under a minute to go to lift Pettisville to the win. Are you expecting something in kind of that scoring range tonight between these two? Well, it depends on, on who's dictating the pace, right? Striker would be more than happy to get them down a little bit, a little bit deeper bench. They want to extend the speed of the game. Pettisville, they'll be more than happy to play a minute and a half, two minutes of possession, keep the score down. If it gets above 45, I think Stryker wins. If it stays below 45, I say Pettisville has a good chance of winning. Well, that kind of gets us right into our next part of our pregame. Let's take a look at our checks of the game tonight. Yeah, starting out with the visitors. Stryker, of course, number one. Don't foul. Here is an amazing number, partner. Are you ready for this? Pettisville, they have shot 403 free throws. Their opponents, only 201. Do not foul. I think a lot of it has to do with the power inside of Caden Jacoby. Be careful that you don't foul. Number two, DD for three, Daniel Donovan. We talked about him in the pregame. 36% from behind the arc. He's gonna have to be active tonight for them to win. And number three, so many times we get caught up in these big moments and we think it's the end of the world if we don't win. Just have fun. Mm -hmm. Coach Woolis stressed that with his team this week. Have fun, enjoy this moment. How many times do you get to play in championship games? Not very often in life, so have fun with it. Enjoy it, relax. How about some keys to the game for the homestanding Pettisville Black? Uh, no doubt about it. The big man, he must be big, Caden Jacoby. He is a stat stuffer supreme. 11 rebounds, shoots 52% from the field. He can score it up in a big way also, and partner, he is a block shot monster. He's gonna have to be big tonight. 17 points for him, 52% from the field, 33 from the arc, 70 from the free throw line. Watch out for him, he is a monster. Number two, Ripke must rip up the net. He can do it in a big way. Keep your eye on his left hand, very explosive. If he gets the double digits, gets the 15, boy, Pettisville's got a huge advantage. And then number three, the guards must deliver. Keep your eye on Jack Leppelmeyer, the coach's son, the freshman. He's gonna be handling the point guard tonight. Number three, can he handle the pressure of this game as a freshman? Well, his brother Max did years ago, so mm -hmm. we'll see if Jack can live up to Max's expectations. Well, who wins the BBC? We'll find out. It's Pettis Villain Striker next here on WOSN. Veteran group of officials uh, working this one tonight as well as the Buckeye Border Conference title is on the line. Dan Carnahan, Matt Smeltzer, and Paul Stoll as uh, we have wrapped up the introductions of the uh, starting lineups. So just about ready to go for what should be a good one. Again, second time these two have met this year. Pettisville winning the opener, rallying uh, from, fifth, or from 10 down in the second half to win. So Caden Jacoby and Elijah Juilliard set to jump center. Pettisville in the white. Striker in the blue and it is the Panthers that win the opening tip and we are underway tonight from the birdcage. Our scoreboard tonight brought to you by the State Bank Invest of Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Pettisville automatically in their man-to-man. -the -man. A little switch up top. 
As Barnum caught a little too far under the basket, Pettisville's gonna take over with the basketball. Yeah, a little bit of a mistake by Stryker because they had the advantage on the poor switch by Pettisville. Barnum just got himself too far under. It's a high post pass. Jacoby's gonna give to the cutter and Ripke. Ripke didn't turn around and look, so the team's match turnovers. Well, high, low, something that you always have to contend with with Pettisville, they had it right there. Good back cut by Ripke, but he forgot one thing, partner. You gotta look for the ball, don't you? Striker takes over just underway here. Barnum trying to go one on one. Nice spin. Dumps it down underneath. Juilliard couldn't get it to go. Rebounds tapped out. Jarrett back able to control it as the Blackbirds will take over with the basketball. No, I think it's evident there's some nerves at play in this basketball game early. A point blank one by Juilliard. Normally he uh, puts that one away, but a little too geeked up early in this basketball game. Caden Jacoby playing up at the perimeter right now. Called for the basketball. Didn't get it, and Blackbirds will work it around. Kobe with it, top of the key once again. Over to Jack Leppelmeyer. Blackbirds take their time this trip. Jacoby tried a little step through, couldn't get it to go, and it's Elijah Juilliard with the rebound. Yeah, Jacoby doesn't have that happen to him much, right? A guy that's playing him defensively that can look him in the eye. Juilliard affected that shot with his length. Panthers win a maybe pick up the pace a little bit more. Very, they very quickly brought the ball into the front uh, court. Michael Donovan had it momentarily. They'll work it around into the hands. Jacob Cadwell. Cadwell with a screen, gets the handoff. Elbow jumper is no good, and Jacoby comes away with a rebound. Yeah, Jacoby even affected that shot with his reach. Cadwell had to pull it back a little bit, causing a miss. Two minutes in, our State Bank scoreboard, and still no score. The jumper is deflected out off the miss. Offensive rebound. Another opportunity. That one rims out. Had a good job in the paint with the rebound that time. Daniel Donovan. Donovan's going to bring the ball into the front court for the Panthers. Entry pass is kicked, and it's going to force an inbound. Yeah, smart play by Donovan. They had the mismatch inside with Juilliard, but the smaller defender tried to get it to him. But, hey, Pettisville, they play some soccer here also. Good kick out of bounds to save an easy layup. Barnum calls for it on the baseline, trying to back his way in, nearly falls down against the first bucket of the night. Now allows them to set up their pressure. They can get some steals off of this or deflections. It'll speed the game up, play at the pace they want. Almost had one near center court. Instead, it's a foul, first of the night. This one's going to be called on Barnum as we take a look at the replay. Yeah, there's, there's Tiki Tackers and there's Nickel Dimers. Now, this is a full dollar bill right there. <laughs> there's no doubt about it. Levi Barnum, the hatchet job in front of the whole world to see. Easy call for the officials. Yeah, Barnum is going to sit down as Mateo Villanueva checks in quick. Sub for the Panthers as we played about two minutes and 50 seconds. Oh. Sean Atkins picks up his dribble. I I'd be surprised if Barnum sits for longer than two minutes. I think it's just kind of steal some time because he picked up an early foul. Both teams will play about seven. We'll see if attrition plays into this one. Also had a, a nasty spill but did come back in when they took on Ayersville on Saturday. So we're going to have a push on the baseline. Originally, Julia does a great job. See how he pushed Jacoby out off the block? Yeah, he kind of reached in a little bit too far, getting the foul. Really good players. They have that knack of getting themselves at a free throw line. And Jacoby's one of those guys. So, uh, Caden Jacoby, who is a 70% free throw shooter, knocks down his first. And that cuts that striker lead in half. Two to one on our state bank scoreboard. And he'll even it up as he knocks down both free tosses. They've been trying this high ball screen action. Changing it up now, they're going to run baseline screens. Cadwell's going to have the ball poked free away from him and will have a jump ball. Arrow's going to favor Pettisville, so the Blackbirds will force a turnover. Yeah, good work by Atkins. First to dig it out, and then to be the first one on the floor. Yeah, I thought it might have been a little steps, but the officials say, hey, give him good effort. Donovan gets down there, get the jump ball, favors Pettisville. It looked like he might have uh, slid across, and now we'll have an over and back as officials are going to say that uh, Caden Jacoby. Yeah, he can't do this anymore. And you're not allowed to start in the front court and land in the back court. 
You have to be in the backcourt to catch the pass. Teams trade turnovers. We play on. Here's a floater in the lane. That one's going to be off the mark. Rebound tracked down in the corner by Jack Lebelmeyer. Lebelmeyer thought about going coast to coast. Charged free of the basketball. Nice bullet pass inside. <laughs> King Jacoby from Joey Ripke able to put it up and in. Well, I don't know how Bill Nueva got on Jacoby, but I think they want to make sure that's not the matchup they want. Easy little jump hook over top of Villanueva, giving up way too much size. Striker set up on offense with Cadwell. He'll get rid of the basketball. Juilliard calling for it inside. His little blind pass is going to be tied up as they try to go low block to low block. I think Elijah Juilliard just needs to settle down, start playing the way he can play. You can see it in his eyes. Everything is just going so fast, trying to do everything perfectly. Just relax and play your game. Striker maintains possession here. They'll have to lob it into the wing to Barnum. Barnum over to Villanueva as they work it around the perimeter. Barnum with it once again, tries to spin. He's double teamed. It's the extra pass, three ball in the corner is no good. Rebounds fought for. Caden Jacoby finally had it in his hands before it's knocked free, but the Blackbirds will have the basketball. Well, if you left your man card at home, you're not going to get a rebound here tonight. You're going to have to be a physical warrior inside, maybe get a couple bench presses in before the game, get that bench up to 250. Two hands on it on every single rebound. If you don't, you're going to lose it. Weight room is located right here by the uh, baseline, so you can get a – they can rack one for you real quick. Yeah. Behind the curtain, a peek for you guys. That's what Randy Roberts does before every broadcast. Max is out, finds the, the gym at every school, and then uh, I spot him, and he gets what he got, about 350 now? I find the gym, then hit the concession stand. That's how that works. <laughs> most everyone knows my physique by now. <laughs> Ripke had an open look. Instead, he'll get the entry pass inside. Look, give and go. And Rip able to finish it off on the left hand. Ah, some basketball IQ. Barnum turned his head to double on the post. Your defender turns his head and loses sight of you. You make the cut. Good find by Jacoby. Easy basket for Pettisville. Opens up a four-point lead for the Blackbirds. And Michael Donovan tried to go inside. Now the kick out and the reset again for the Panthers. Striker just trying to create something. A lot of movement, but no, nothing with the ball. Yeah, great defense early in this game by Pettisville. They have every single set striker likes to run, well scouted, doing such a great job of getting over top of screens. Entry pass, a little bit ahead of Juilliard, thrown out of bounds. Another turnover, and the Blackbirds get it back. At some point in time, striker is going to have to get something out of their pressure. This 2-2-1 hasn't really affected the game yet. Blackbird's able to inbound the basketball as Caden Jacoby with it. Now Ripke will bring it across the timeline. Ripke able to go right to the basket. Able to float up a pass on the left hand. It's left short. But Caden Jacoby right there to clean things up. And the Panthers will take a quick timeout. We'll step aside as well. Pettisville 8-2 early on here from the birdcage. Eight two, Pettisville leader early on here over Striker Miles. I think there's something you saw in that last play there. Now easy to break the press when the hands are on the sides, right? Nobody's got their hands ready for the passing lane. Good crossover by Ripke. Attacks it right here. Now watch Jacoby on the replay right here, catches it, reverses it back in. Partner, how many times has he scored in his career off of putbacks? Got to get a body into Jacoby. And speaking of put back, Stryker able to score off a of one as Elijah Juilliard able to stick it up and in, cuts that Pettisville lead down to 8 4 here with a minute 15 to go in our opening quarter. A good time out by Tyler Woolis to settle his guys down. It was evident that they were really tight. Runner by Sean Adkins is no good, so here's Stryker off the miss. Thought about pushing tempo a little bit once they get in the half court, they set up. Both poked free by Beck. 
And it looks like he's unable to control it as it heads out of bounds. A great effort by Beck again. Just a little bit of the right hand. Got to be tight with your dribble if you're Donovan. Tremendous effort slides, but unfortunately for Pettisville, he was on the line. So Gavin LeBeau and Cadwell enter for strikers. We play under a minute to go in quarter number one. Tough shot, no good by Cadwell. Try to go up and over a defender. Now think of how many shots Stryker has taken already with a defender in front of him, hand extended. Good fundamental defense being ex exhibited by Pettisville early. So with 30 seconds to go in the quarter, we'll see what Pettisville does here. May try to just run this out and play for a final shot with a four point lead. And Cadwell doing everything he can to deny Leppelmeyer from getting the ball, playing 100% denial on him. Great work by Cadwell. Instead, it comes over to the wing to Jarrett Beck. Beck's going to reset down to 10 seconds. Now Leppelmeyer with it. Leppelmeyer gets a screen. Shot is going to be partially blocked from the side, saved from going out of bounds. Second effort ends up out of play, and Strike will get it with two seconds. Oh, just tenacity out of Cadwell. Fought through two screens over top. Get a piece of that shot by Leppelmeyer. Stryker throws it near midcourt. And the end of the quarter will come with the shot being a little short. So 8-4 Pettisville. After one, we'll take a timeout with the BBC Championship on the line. Well, what's a trip to Pettisville without seeing the Blackbird? 8-4. Home standing birds in front after one. There are some mascots like Archie the Archer that terrify me, but there are some I love to see. And the Blackbird, always, always a welcoming sight. Look at the smile on him. A little ferocious, but at the same time happy. He's a happy Blackbird because Pettisville's up 8-4. I can't uh, say the same thing for what's being said inside that striker huddle right now with their uh, head coach as they break it after one quarter of play. A little tight basketball, we'll say, after eight minutes. Yeah, without a doubt. But if you look up, only down four, right? He did not play great in that first quarter. He can finally settle down. Cadwell doing such a great job on Leppelmeyer out top. Blackbirds with the basketballs will be in our second quarter. King Jacoby again out at the wing. Here's Beck. Beck looking for someone to come get the basketball. Looked a little uncomfortable. His shot is going to be partially deflected. It's taken away as Daniel Donovan with it. And a double T stayed between the basket and Beck. Got a good hand on it. Count that one as a blocked shot. Panthers with it, trying to make this a one possession game. Juilliard still has his dribble. Will use one and then find Levi Barnum. Barnum pulls up at the elbow. Give and go action there. Runners off the mark. Rebound's going to hit off the back of Jacoby. Head out of bounds. It's going to stay striker basketball. And one of the problems striker has with their offense right now, nobody is challenging a defender with their dribble. Every dribble off on the perimeter is just a slow, patient dribble. Get a dribble attacking the basket. Make the defense move. Thought about going for the three in the corner. Instead, the floater from the baseline is going to be no good. Rebound once again is off of Blackbird. And Stryker will have a third opportunity with it. Now, yeah, remember we talked about having that man card, two hands on the rebound. You know, one hand again, you don't get the rebound, it goes off, you out of bounds. Still 8-4 in our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by the State Bank. Invest in Northwest West Central Ohio, skilled objective, and caring financial planners. Now make it 8-6. As Stryker able to score in the third opportunity as Daniel Donovan scores for the first time tonight. And that big brother set a screen for little brother. Little brother delivered. Nice little floater. The Blackbirds trying to go with Leppelmeyer at the free throw line. He'll give behind him Ripke. Ripke is going to be called for the travel. Now, I think that later as this game progresses, partner, if he comes off that three-point look and they run him off the line, he attacks Ripke, that is, he's going to have to get to the middle of the floor and rise up in the key and shoot it as opposed to thinking he's going to get all the way to the rack because Stryker doing a good job of cutting him off. Barnum, speaking of cutoff, cutoff at the free throw line. Oh, he'll get the basketball back. 
Has his back to the basket. Instead, he's got a float pass back up top for Michael Donovan. Barnum with it once again. Back over to Cadwell. Cadwell starts a drive. Now again back to Barnum. That one's going to be up no good. Rebounds fought for. And Jacoby wins it for the Blackbirds. It looked like Barnum kind of caught in between if he's going to shoot it directly or use the glass. And one of his uh, not prettiest efforts shooting the basketball there. Here's Jacoby. Might have been inadvertent. Don't know if he actually knew the defender was coming. Turned and shielded it away. Here's Ripke in the offensive rebound. Can't get it to go. Jacoby will clean up as Caden Jacoby now has eight points tonight. Now two on the putback variety for Jacoby. Just cleaning up the glass. Got to get a body on him if you're wearing a blue jersey. Rebound or ball poke free. Striker coaches wanted a little contact in the call, but none made, and the Blackbirds have it. You know, only two fouls called so far in this game. Officials doing a good job of letting them play. Here's Jacoby at the wing. He's going to back up, looking for a guard. Nope, he's going to reset the offense himself. Over to Leppelmeyer. Leppelmeyer with a ball fake. And they'll swing it around to the right side. This does not bother Pettisville. They're more than happy to run a lot of clock working for a shot. Looks like Ripke and Jacoby are going to do a little uh, two-man game. Jacoby tried to roll to the basket. Now he's going to come up, set a screen. Sean Atkins will get rid of the basketball. Now Barnum went under the screen because he knows that Atkins, not a great three-point shooter, was able to hedge on the roll. Back to Leppelmeyer. Leppelmeyer gets into the paint. Switches hands, couldn't get it to go. Rebound is knocked around, and now contact and a foul. <laughs> I would say there was some contact, huh? Little circus shot by Leppelmeyer. Good job by Juilliard. Barnum gets the rebound, and a little demolition derby in the middle of the floor. <laughs> My favorite at the end of that was Atkins after falling down while seated, reaches out as if the opposing player <laughs> is going to automatically help him up. I just cut you in half. Let me Help me up now, will you? 10-6. Oh. Here on our State Bank scoreboard. Quick three from the corner. That one's going to be off the mark. And a foul on the putback. And we'll see Levi Barnum head to the charity stripe. Now, you think tomorrow in film, Donovan's going to be Coach Willis, I was passing it all the way. I saw Barnum. On the low block, getting free. And Donovan's got to settle down a little bit, not shooting his characteristic automatic self from behind the arc at 36%, struggling a little bit. Now, there is a weakness for Stryker. It is the free throw line. Barnum is a 50% shooter, and he misses the first. Now, you're, you're very kind. It's 53% as a team. It's unbelievable. You look at their shooting percentages as field goal, 46% as a team. They hit 30% of threes. And then you look at the free throws at 53%. You go, huh? How's this jive? It doesn't add up. Barnum second on the way. That one will miss. Jarrett Beck comes up with a miss for the Blackbirds. Have it up four in our State Bank scoreboard. Beck will just hold. Now gets rid of it. Now run this over and over, see if they can catch you napping on a backdoor cut after a pass. Beck will have it ripped away as Barnum comes up with a basketball. Barnum fires it into the corner for Daniel Donovan. A second time, Juilliard's affected a dribbler by picking it clean. It's rare for a guy his size. Dribble handoff for Barnum. Barnum. Open lane to the rack. He's able to put it up and in. Yeah, a little bit of a mover screen that time by Juilliard to get him free. But heck, if it works and they don't call it, keep doing it. Cuts that Blackbird lead down to two. Here with th under three to go in our third quarter is Joey Ripke is going to be called for a travel. And it looks like he might be a little hurt. He landed, it's like on his wrist. Looks like he is able to get up. Kind of loses balance on a hop step or did he get, catch a foot? It's kind of a weird play. Thankfully, he's all right. He's going to get up, and he looks like he's going to be fine. 
They're not even going to look to see if there's a wet spot on the floor. That's how confident they are that there's nothing there. Striker with the basketball after the turnover. Good look on the baseline. That one's going to be stopped. Three ball well off the mark as well. Rebounds out of bounds. It's going to stay striker ball as the battle in the corner continued between Levi Barnum and Joey Ripke. Uh, watch this block. Oh, this is actually the play going out of bounds. I thought Ripke might have gotten the foul call on him going over top of Barnum. But the officials have said they're going to let guys play. They're going to be physical. Here's Villanueva. Picks up his dribble, has to get it out to Barnum. Barnum gets it once again, gets the screen. Now he's trying to back down two defenders. His pass is going to be intercepted. One to go over the top, but the size and length of Caden Jacoby affected that one. Two minutes to go in the half. Not out of the realm of possibility. Pettisville plays this down, Miles. <laughs> they, they have that capability. They have three guys that can handle the ball. If they don't have what they like, they just pull back out and run it again. They will make you dizzy running that motion offense. And it'll be Jacoby who's going to be called for the offensive foul. Well, you decide right here, one-on-one -on -one against Juilliard. Recognize that Juilliard's not in a great position. They're going to say that he used the right forearm to push off. Oh, I've seen worse. I've seen a lot worse. Big break for Stryker. So first foul whistled on Jacoby. Just the third of the half against the Blackbirds here as we've got under 90 seconds to go in the opening half on our State Bank scoreboard. Yeah, Coach Leppelmeyer asking the official in a very demonstrative way on the sideline, why did you call that? Sir. Yes. I don't agree, sir. Donovan with it out at the wing, trying to get an entry pass inside. Can't find anything as they get it out to Barnum. Now, Juilliard had Jacoby pinned. That <laughs> block shot got my partner excited. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Are we watching volleyball? Ripke trying to go inside, left hand, can't get it to go. Striker with it. Down under 50 seconds to play in the half. Michael Donovan gets a screen, pulls up from the free throw line. <laughs> that one partially deflected, but right to a teammate as Elijah and Julie are able to put that up and in. Well, how about striker? They've hung around, hung around, did not play great basketball in the first quarter, but they've got it tied up now right before half. Pettisville looking for one possession to reclaim the lead before the halftime break. Jack Leppelmeyer with it. It's either going to be Leppelmeyer or Jacoby, but no. How about <laughs> Jarrett Beck? Big shot. Stryker trying to baseball pass at the half. That will do it, but we got to take a look at this one. They got Miles excited. Oh, watch this block. Oh, that's the second one. But the one earlier was absolutely amazing. Juilliard cleans it up. But how about the big three by Beck? 17% behind the arc on the year, 100%. That time, this has been a fun first half. 13-10, Blackbirds at the break. We'll have the second half for you when we return here on WOSN. Thirteen ten are scored to half. Pettisville lead over Stryker. Very uh, entertaining first half. That's Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. Uh, we know what's at stake, the uh, championship of the Buckeye Border Conference. We mentioned a couple of times, uh, Stryker looking for their first outright championship of the Buckeye Border Conference since 2001. Shared it a couple of times with the Blackbirds since then. Before Pettisville, we walk in, you see the banners that hang across from us. The fact that it takes two banners to list all the boys' basketball championships. There's a lot of numbers. You, tells you there. about the history of uh, Pettisville, but... Uh, this one uh, entertaining in its own unique way, I guess you'd say. That's Curtis, our camera guy right next to you. And he's the second best guy on the crew behind RoboCam. Good job, Curtis. 
If partner, if I was Coach Willis, I'd go into halftime and I'd think of the most cornball, corny joke I could come up with to kind of get the guys to relax mm -hmm. yeah, because they were so tight in the first half. And Pettisville got a great shot at the end of half by Jarrett Beck. Good situational basketball by them, converting at the end of the first half to get themselves the lead back at 13-10. Yeah, good couple of shots there just to show you how full the birdcage is. Not quite a sellout. Still a great crowd anytime Stryker and Pettisville get together. So both teams 6-0 in the BBC. Winner claims the Buckeye border title. Panthers with basketball first. Cadwell had it. He'll get it. Barnum, good spin by Barnum. Tries to go up with the left hand. Doesn't get it to go. And a nice job of the rebound under the basket by Caden Jacoby. Now, I thought when he caught the ball originally, he just went straight up. He would have had himself a basket as Ripke was trailing just a little bit. But good job by Ripke to catch up and hold him to no points. I'll get it to Ripke inside. He's going to try to turn around. Man's up. Can't find anything. They'll have to kick it out. Reset the offense. Jacoby can't find anything. Back up top it goes. We saw Pettisville do this a few times that opening half. They'll be in no hurry. They don't mind taking upwards to 90 seconds off the clock in a possession. Yeah, no shot clock, so they can just keep running it. First one to 25 might win this basketball game tonight. Understand a few people might be upset with the no shot clock. Yeah, eventually it's going to come into basketball. Probably needed. Saw that game out west. Was it 4-2 to two this four to week? 4-2 in Oklahoma. Yeah. And we can get into the nuts and bolts about that some other time as Jared Beck puts up a three. That's his second of the night. And he's at his season average. Well, evidently somebody better call his mama because he's a bad dude behind the arc. Beck, big time. Opens up a six-point lead for the Blackbirds. Here's Michael Donovan being chased around. A Barnum's going to mishandle it. Back out for Cadwell. Kind of surprised that wasn't a foul call as Atkins rolled into the dribbler. Barnum trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Ripke. He's now double teamed. Found the open player, but a mishandled basketball. Forces a turnover. Here's Ripke, and he's going to be fouled as Jacob Cadwell tries to ride him in on the hip down the uh, court. Yeah, just not taking care of the basketball. Kind of surprised Juilliard. Next thing you know, it's fast break city for Pettisville. Cadwell with the yeah, little push. Yeah. <laughs> it was an Archie Griffin stiff arm at about the 40-yard line. 16-10 on our scoreboard brought to you by the State Bank. Now make that 18-10. As Caden Jacoby now is able to get into double digits with the look inside. Well, Stryker snacking on some danger. Yet the score in this quarter. Down by eight. Got to get some points here. Barnum had to flip it back out to Daniel Donovan. They'll get it inside Juilliard. Elijah Juilliard, some fancy footwork, is able to get inside and get the deuce. Yeah, really nice job of digging out. Jacoby got himself some position. They need a bucket in the worst way. Juilliard delivers. 18-12, and again, our scoreboard tonight brought to you by the State Bank invested in the Northwest, West Central Ohio, skilled objective and caring financial planners. Off to the wing, here's Beck. Up nope, top of the key for Leppelmeyer. Pettisville, another trip, and they just work it around the perimeter. Jacoby calling for the ball at the, at the uh, elbow. Spun to the opposite low block, but nothing there. Yeah, it's kind of fun watching Jacoby and Juilliard battling each other out, either the high post or the low block. Those two are working extremely hard. Jacoby calling for it and wanted a screen and a cutter. Not sure if he got what he wanted. It's Pettisville working around. Jacoby now just comes up top to get the basketball. The officials really letting moving screens go on quite a bit. Tough to play defense against him. There's a big screen by Jacoby. Nice job, standing flat-footed. Juilliard able to get the block. Come the Panthers, bring the ball in the front court. We're, we are already halfway through this third quarter. Ball's loose on the floor. It's going to be recovered by Stryker. They'll maintain the possession. Barnum, open look, turns it down, had his feet set. Nice pass inside. 
finds the open man. Cadwell able to score for the first time. Now just like that, a 4-0 run after the 5-0 run to start this half. Makes it 18-14. There's Leppelmeyer, and uh, there you go, partner. Yeah, finally gonna get a mover. Moving screen, you better call U-Haul on that one because everybody's moving on it. Substitution comes in for uh, strikers. Mateo Villanueva checks back in. It's one of these games where no matter what the call is, there's so many people here, it's either going to be booed or cheered. It's going to be half and half either way. Foul went on Caden Jacoby. That's going to be his second. First of the half whistled against the Blackbirds. Pettisville player, I'm sorry, striker playing away from the basket. Michael Donovan gives to the cutter. That one is unable to go. Villanueva had a good look. Caden Jacoby able to reach up, get the rebound. Yeah, Jarrett back to just enough to affect Villanueva's shot attempt after he got beat on the backdoor cut. Now Ripke with it. Kobe, it's a little subtle fake on the uh, shot there. The Pestle fans wanted a body on Juilliard, but they get the block instead. And on top of that, a reach is going to go against Sean Atkins. Uh, how about Elijah Juilliard? They said the first half was Block City for Pettisville. Second half belongs to me. Big fella blocking big fella. A little big fella on big fella violence right there. And for the first time tonight, we will see Creighton Ashelman, number five, enter the contest for the Blackbirds. Second foul on Atkins, and it looks like he's still out on the floor. Not often Villanueva can look at the guy Garden and say, I'm bigger than him, but this is the case. See if Stryker tries to post him up and take advantage of that height. Juilliard skip pass over the top to Villanueva. Villanueva is going to find the safety outlet in Barnum. Barnum wanted to give to the cutter, being hounded defensively by Joey Ripke. Yeah, Barnum picking up his dribble too early on that sequence. Gets it back. Lob this time goes in. Ball's going to be jarred loose, and it's a turnover as the Blackbirds come away with the basketball. It's a shame for a striker because Juilliard caught it. He's going to have an easy path to the basket. Cut this game down to two. Ripke get a little creative with a pass, but through the legs, and a good finish by Jacoby. Ahead on the other end, Juilliard able to get up and score. Now Juilliard did a great job of running the floor, knowing that Jacoby was taken down. To so run the floor, get to the low block before your counterpart and take advantage of it. Now blocking call on the dribble drive. This will be well before the shot. You see Ripke here. I believe this is gonna be the post entry into Jacoby on the low block. A great pass right there by Ripke to find him. And then the ability to go through contact. We said the big man must be big tonight. Caden Jacoby's being big. Inbound goes into Ripke, and he's able to draw the foul. Well, it's funny how the up fake still works in basketball. Ripke fakes away, comes back, little up fake. Gonna get Juilliard up in the air, comes down, hacks the arm. You don't want to foul Ripke, put him to the free throw line. He's almost automatic. Yeah, top free throw shooter for the Blackbirds at 76%, able to get the first one. Extends that lead to five with a minute seven to go on our State Bank scoreboard. Second one a little too strong. Villanueva tracks down the rebound. Here come the Panthers. Daniel Donovan gets it back, comes around his floater, up and in. To give him four, back to a one possession game. Yeah, both of them on a floater variety. They've been doing a good job, Pettisville that is, of chasing him off the three point line. And Donovan's got something going on with his knee brace. You see him trying to fix it real quick right there. 
Kind of surprised Pettisville allowed him a second to do it. Awfully generous of him, isn't it? Yeah, got a guy working on his uh, knee brace. He took him to the hoop right away. Jack Kleppelmeyer waited for the five-second call to begin. Now we'll move a little bit as the Blackbirds going to play for the final shot of the period. Jack Leppelmeyer draws the double. Now here's Beck, long range, can he get three? No, Ripke with it. His attempt, doesn't get it to go. Beck with one more, turn around, no good. Three looks from downtown and that's how the quarter will end. Stryker continues to just hang around. It's a three point game as we head into the fourth quarter. Twenty-one eighteen. you see on your uh, screen, Pettisville with lead over Stryker as we head into the fourth quarter. It's eight minutes to determine a champion of the Buckeye Border Conference. Yeah, Stryker going to start this fourth quarter with Juilliard on the bench. It won't be long before he's back in, but during the timeout, did a good job of uh, working the official. Paul Stoll on his side right there and saying, hey, you know, I'm going to the glass. I'm getting fouled. Help me out right there. Mr. Stoll just kind of smiled at him. Officials holding up play for just a moment while Levi Barnum fixed the uh, untied shoe. Got to have shoes at work. That's right. We don't, we don't want any blowouts. Blackbirds with the basketball. Long lob in. Nice catch as uh, Pettisville going a little bit deeper into their bench. Well, that's actually Jacoby wearing a 54 jersey. That's going to be no good. Shot is out of bounds. So Caden Jacoby, a little something must have blood on the other jersey. That's the only thing I can think of, right? Or it got ripped or something. The official said he got, that one's going to come out. But would you be surprised that there's blood on a jersey the way this thing's been played? <laughs> no. I was a little concerned. I had a 53, but I didn't have a 54. You thought there was another 6'9 guy on yeah. the bench? A quick glance, you look at the number first, then you see the body. You don't think the people in Pezzo will be like, Coach, put the other 6'9 kid in as well? <laughs> we get them both in together. <laughs> no, one at a time. That's how basketball works. <laughs> there are rules. This isn't knob. <laughs> well, what a luxury it is to have, though. How many times they've broken that token pressure by striker just by lobbing it up to the 6'9 Jacoby? Striker. No pressure right now. That's allowing Pettisville to take some of the air out of the basketball. We've run a minute off this fourth quarter clock on our scoreboard brought to you by the State Bank. Here's Sean Atkins. Atkins the hero. First time these two met, uh, December 1st in striker in non-conference play. And now we're going to get a whistle, and it looks like a foul on striker on the dribble drive. I think they're going to dial up Barnum right here. One-on-one you know, -on -one against Ripke. Rookie through the legs. Uses that forearm right there. Ripke for a guy that's left-handed. He's pretty strong with that right-handed dribble as well. Got to play him even up. Ripke trapped in the corner. Got rid of the basketball. Now he'll get it back along that far sideline. Striker looks like beginning a little uh, jump and chase defense. A little run and jump. Got to be careful that you cover the back end or else it's going to result in a dunk. Pettisville fans wanted to foul as two players draped themselves all over Caden Jacoby. Jacoby's going to have the ball just taken away. Good play defensively there by Elijah Juilliard. So here's Barnum, a little bit of a high dribble. That's going to get the Pettisville fans upset. Three ball off the mark as Jack Kleppelmeyer comes away with a rebound. Yeah, just haven't been able to get Donovan going from behind the arc. That one had a good look at it. Jacoby, that high post pass. Now back out to Ripke. We'll see how much time Pettisville runs off the clock. Already under 5.45 to go. Now this double team, if they swing it quick, they'll have an open three for Jarrett Beck in the corner. He's already hit two tonight. Could make you pay in the worst way. Back standing there once again. The ball's jarred free. Striker off the miss. 
Takes it right to the rack. That's Michael Donovan. Couldn't get it to go. And here's the Blackbirds now with numbers. It was three on two. Ball's going to be poked free. And now a whistle and a foul as Juilliard, the second time on three trips, come up with a good defensive play. Now you got to credit Jacoby, though. He had the ball stolen on the back end. Comes and gets involved on the defensive side. And then a little bit of a poke out right there by Barnum. Juilliard gets his hand on it. And then it's going to be a car crash. Foul's going to go on Jarrett back. That is his first third whistle on the Blackbirds. Floater in the lane is going to be short. There's another block by Jacoby Juilliard. That uh, Palms outlook going by his bench as he has to run back and play defense. Now, how many times has Jacoby affected shots in this basketball game? I have him down for five blocks already. He has been Mr. Big inside. Part of the reason why the Blackbirds have this five-point lead. And now it looks like a timeout. And we'll take one as well. So the Blackbirds want to talk about it. We'll take a break. 4.38 to play. Pettisville trying to claim the BBC title. Twenty-three, eighteen. both teams breaking their huddles here. 4.38 left to go. Uh, see that uh, thanks to our scoreboard tonight brought to you by the State Bank. This one, uh, big fight feel. Might not have uh, the scoring that you would expect. Again, these two played in the regular season. It was 38-36. I guess the first being this is still the regular season as well. Met non-conference play. Well, championship game, right? Unofficially. Staying with that run and jump, trying to get some kind of turnovers out of it, but Pettisville doing a good job of being ready for it. Nice backdoor cut by Atkins. He's able to draw the foul. And Sean Atkins, who's a 64% free throw shooter, will head to the line. Now watch him hang out. Sees that nobody's on the low block. That's going to wave a spot. Has the mismatch, a little up fake. They're going to get Bill in the wave with the foul. It's going to be his first, team's fifth. So here's Atkins at the line, and first one's going to be too strong. Oh, that's the problem, though. If you, you try to run and jump and you don't get the trap, you don't get the turnover. You're leaving someone on the back door open. Atkins was able to take advantage of it. Second one is good. So Atkins scores for the first time tonight. Keeps it a two possession game here as we near the halfway mark of our fourth quarter. Cadwell to Barnum. Barnum held under his average, just four points so far tonight. Tries to back down Ripke, good look, gets the bounce and he's able to score. A little one on one move right there, a little baby hook, he's able to convert. Keeps him within distance, only down four now for Stryker. Ripke able to jump up, save that basketball from headed out of bounds. Now Jacoby's gonna come out with no one guarding him. He'll hold on to the basketball. Ripke off the high post. Good look, couldn't get it to go, but the offensive rebound and the putback out of Jaden. Caden Jacoby. Yeah, Ricky was able to break the defense down with his dribble. Juilliard had to come help that left Jacoby all by himself to get the rebound. And a bullet pass inside. A great look by Cadwell. He'll find Elijah Juilliard and back down to a four point game. Stryker's going to take a timeout. Hey, Jacob Cadwell, just one of those guys, partner, that does all kinds of little things for you to be successful, right? You got to have those guys to win championships. Played tremendous defense all game long, especially in that first half. That time, a little two-man game to find a big fella inside. Cut it back to four. Yeah, great bullet pass to get that in for the score. So you see on our uh, State Bank scoreboard, 26-22. Yeah, both coaches working feverishly in their huddles. 3.09 left. You want to win a championship? It's all in front of you. Go get it. So both of these teams also involved in uh, Division Four tournament action coming up 
couple of weeks from now. And Pettisville, they get a win in their sectional. We'll play Antwerp, who got the bye. That'd be a heck of a matchup. Three-quarter court pressure applied by Stryker. Is Ripke able to bring the ball into the front court? And now Leppelmeyer has it. One of our keys with the guards, we're going to have to play well for Pettisville. I'd say that's the case. Joey Ripke able to draw the foul, stops her clock. 2.47 to go. Yeah, Ripke does enough with his body language on contact where it, it kind of asks the official to call it, doesn't it? He's got that ability to do that. And that guy right there, Jack Leppelmeyer, hasn't scored tonight, but he's been impressive. Lack of turnovers for Stryker. They get a lot of off turnovers to get points off of him. Not here tonight as Pettisville is taking care of the basketball. So Stryker foul was the third on Barnum. Six team fouls, so the next one does put Pettisville in the bonus. Back able to step through a double team. Here's Adkins in the corner. He'll find Ripke. Ripke's gonna have the ball poked away. I believe that was Cadwell, the first one to put his hands on it. And here's Stryker in transition. Barnum, as his defender slides down inside, a nice look, Juilliard able to put it up and in. Now, smart play by Juilliard, use the rim to help himself out to get free. Jacoby wasn't able to block it because he went to the reverse side. Oh, is this fun or what, partner? Now, this is as close as Stryker has made it. 26-24, the buck 45 to go. Coach Brian Lebelmeyer, just a big wave, let it go, let the offense run. Instead, it's a turnover, and Stryker will have the chance to tie or take the lead. Now, just when we were complimenting Pettisville and really limiting turnovers, back-to-back -back turnovers have kept Stryker in this. Now a chance to tie or go ahead. Michael Donovan in traffic is going to be fouled. Just the fourth, I believe, is going to be whistled on the Blackbirds. It's going to be the second on Ripke. It stops the clock, which you see on our State Bank scoreboard with a minute 21 to go. Inbound's going to come into Barnum. Into the corner for Cadwell. Cadwell Barnum, a little two man game. Pulls up, buries it, we're tied. Oh, how about Cadwell? Delivers yet again. A pull up jumper to tie it up. And the half of the birdcage in blue making some noise. Here's Ripke down to the low block, pivots around, through a double team, couldn't get it off the high glass, put back up and good as Caden Jacoby, who's got to be nearing a double double just on offensive rebounds, puts it back in. Barnum with a spin into the corner. His defender falls down. Ripke gets back up. Shot's no good. Another rebound for Jacoby. Ball's loose. Back with it. And a timeout. Looking for a foul. But instead, timeout taken Blackbird. Well, was it Jared Beck that called the timeout alertly, or was it Coach Leppelmeyer that got the ear of the official? If it was Beck, that's a heads up play to keep possession. 25 seconds left to go. Pettisville will have to inbound. Next striker foul will put the Blackbirds in the bonus. Now if you don't get the steal right away for a striker, commit the foul. Try to deny the guys that you don't want at the free throw line. Try to navigate it where the guys you want at the free throw line. Uh, always go back to what Dan Dockage always says. You want to be a good free throw shooting team? Get the guys that you want to shoot free throws at the line, right? Have your best players that shoot free throws get the basketball here. Wait to get fouled. You have to believe that is what Pettisville will believe uh, Stryker's going to try to do. With 25 seconds, you do have a couple of opportunities to rip the basketball away. Pettisville will have to go three-quarters court. So they'll have the ball in the backcourt if you try to waste 10 seconds. Yeah, if you're Pettisville, do not pass this backwards. You know, stay away from that corner there. They'll allow Stryker to get a trap. 
And they are on their feet here at the birdcage. Kind of surprised Stryker's playing off. Cadwell right into the face of Beck on the inbound. It's deflected, but right to the hands of Leppelmeyer. Leppelmeyer to, Kat, or to uh, Jacoby, and Jacoby's going to be clutched and fouled with 17.4 to go. Well, if you're striker here, do you call timeout to kind of ice them a little bit and set them things up? You have three in your pocket. Coach Woolish, you might have saw him in the corner of your camera. He was wanting a, a travel call. Jacoby able to knock down the front end of the one and one. At this one, a big free throw. Try to make this a two possession game. Kobe a big night, 19 of the 29. Make it 20. Gotta go quick of your striker, down four. Big free throws by Jacoby. And Stryker is gonna take the timeout. We'll take one as well. So Stryker talking over some options. We'll see what they come up with when we return. Thirty twenty six. Pettisville with a lead over Stryker. Seventeen seconds left to decide the championship of the Buckeye Border Conference. Both teams six and zero in conference play. Blackbirds thirteen and six overall. Stryker eleven and nine. Those couldn't be less important tonight. I got to get a quick one here. If you get a chance to lob it into Juilliard right away, take it. Yeah, taking too much time already, though. My bad. I said 17 seconds, 14.7, and now foul is going to be called on Pettisville, Sean Atkins. Uh, not bad, though, because you have fouls to give. So Atkins got... tried to take the ball away, too. Panthers have to get it in, they do quickly. Three, and we will have the foul. Uh, you don't want to do that if you're Pettisville, but this is a good call by the official, and you wonder, why are you even getting this close? You're up by four. You're going to see Leppelmeyer, yeah, on the hand just enough. So here's Michael Donovan, and he will miss the first. That uh, puts you in a position now you have to make the next two. If you would have made the first two, you could possibly miss the third one, get the offensive rebound. And we'll talk about strategies after this one. Second one is good. So we're at a three-point game. Pettisville's going to talk about a few things as well. A lot of strategizing going on. So 8.3 seconds. We'll make Miles put his old coaching hat on. Got to dust it off a little bit. <laughs> oh, what's this three-point line thing? Do you miss the third on purpose in a one-possession game with eight seconds? Do and you get the and point? And try to and kick it back out for yeah. the three. Uh, with eight seconds left, I go ahead and make the free throw and uh, try to get the steal or the quick foul. Eight seconds, still a lot of time left. We'll see what Stryker elects to do. Pettisville just reminding their players all the options that Stryker has. Sure, the biggest thing that was repeated in that Pettisville huddle, no fouls. Oh, without a doubt, right? You see Coach Leppelmeyer's face on that foul call. Now, first things first, though, got to take care of Donovan. Well, you see Strikers at the line. They're acting like they're going to run in, but Donovan's going to make the free throw. I sent uh, Gavin LeBeau in Stops the clock. He, he may be the, to set up. Yeah, he may be the designated fouler here. Eight seconds and foul comes in after one second. Goes off the clock and we'll walk to the other end of the floor. Jarrett back with a couple of three pointers. We'll shoot the one and one. Uh, tough to pick who you want to shoot free throws for this Pettisville team. High percentage is at the line. Beck at 70%. Look at the eyes. Is he ready? 
One big breath, try to calm him down. Free throw on the way, no good. And the rebound's out to Juilliard. Long pass ahead, ball's loose on the floor. We're gonna have a foul. Who's the foul gonna be on? It's gonna go on Stryker. And Pettisville is gonna shoot another one and one. A good rebound by Juilliard, but he's got two guys calling outlet. Tries to go to length of the floor. Donovan not near close. Well, that's a tough one right there. I in, can see where Coach Woolis couldn't believe that call. In football, that'd be an easy pass interference because he didn't let the receiver come back to the ball. Don't think pass interference is a basketball foul. And now here's the free throw. That one's off the mark. Striker timeout, and now they'll have 2.4 seconds. Now 2.4, you still have timeouts at your disposal. All you've got to do is get a catch at half court, call timeout again, and you'll have an opportunity to get one launched off. Now no advancement like the NBA. That's a shame, isn't it? There's Tyler Wallace having a talk with his guys. Do you think high school coaches will fight that rule forever if they want to bring that in? Advancement with a timeout. That comes no. with the shot clock. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We're, we're going to go NBA, we're going to go full NBA. The problem for Pettisville is you want to play good defense, right? But if you touch somebody, you're putting them at the line. That's a lot of fun. Both coaches working hard in their huddles. Striker needs two to tie as well. And again, they still have to go the length of the floor. Not sure if they're worried about that. This may just be for the outright win. Another classic. Seems like every time these two teams match up, you get some kind of action like this. Remember a year ago, Pettisville had an opportunity to get a share of the BBC, and Stryker upset them, mm -hmm. denied them that. 157th time Pettisville and Stryker have met in basketball. Pettisville leading the all-time series 83-73. And now Pettisville, after seeing what Stryker lined up, they'll take a timeout. It'll be interesting. They didn't have anybody on the inbounder Barnum, right? They call timeout to see how Stryker was set up. Will he put somebody on it? Look, years ago, the Christian Leitner play, Grant Hill throwing it to him. I learned, always put somebody on the <laughs> inbounder, make that a tough throw. So Coach uh, Leppelmeyer, maybe they're gonna talk about it, put somebody big on the inbounder. So I think I can say this because he's safely far enough away and, and won't be able to see this, but my uh, brother-in-law, coaches JV basketball in yeah. Sylvania. So he had a game down to the wire, got his got his whiteboard out, drew up the Leitner play, and then credited himself as if he just thought of it uh, in the timeout. It did it work? It did not. No, he didn't have Leitner. Didn't, and, didn't have Leitner. Yeah. And more importantly, a slow timekeeper. What, what Leitner, dri he dribbled oh, like 10 times. I felt like that way. Ate a hot dog, then tried to launch it, and it went in. He's talking to his guys in a timeout. I'm sitting in the front row and in, in between JV and varsity games. Lean over. Hey, so uh, that play you drew up at the end, that looked familiar, and I just got the uh, sheepish little grin. Yeah, they're going to put Ripke in front of Barnum. Ripke with that length. Call There's timeout. A pass to midcourt. It's going to be made. Or is this going to be a turnover? Oh, they're going to give the timeout. It was questionable because Juilliard, when he came down, kind of like football, and the scorer's table is going to block it. Was he on the sideline? Ah, the Pettisville staff was up in arms, saying he was on the line. But how about Juilliard showing? No, no, NFL. That's a that's a good catch. Two feet in. We need Gene Steratore with the uh, the index <laughs> card. Is there a little bit of room here? <laughs> well, I'll just be thankful this isn't a Sunday afternoon game. We'd be another half hour analyzing it. Oh, we do have the replay. We get. Uh, Someone, someone runs the monitor down courtside. A great our, job of execution, though. Get the catch to Juilliard, get the timeout. Only took three tenths of a second. You have more time than you thought you'd have at 2.1 left. You have a chance to catch, dribble, and shoot. This is going to be a fun opportunity. Who do you want to shoot it if you're striker, though? It's got to be Barnum, right? Barnum or Donovan, yeah. Yeah, he's had a rough night behind the arc, but it only takes the one to make it a good night. Yeah, Elijah Juilliard able. 
Yeah, I always like to try to go inside at these moments or dribble drive in, put the officials in a bind. Mm -hmm. So Barnum's going to do the inbounding, 2.1 to play. We'll get it in. Cadwell. Cadwell for the win! Oh, oh my God! Oh, you didn't think it could happen, but it did! Cadwell delivers again! Jacob Cadwell delivers a BBC title as the Striker Panthers. Unbelievable win over Pettisville. 31-30. Unbelievable finish in the birdcage. Thirty-one, thirty. Striker gets the win. We'll take a timeout and we'll see if our Miles Holiday can catch up with a big hero of the night when we return. What an unbelievable finish here in the birdcage. The Striker Panthers, thanks to a buzzer beating three pointer, win their first outright Buckeye Border Conference crown since 2001 as they defeat the Pettisville Blackbirds 31 30. And our Miles Holiday down on the court with our big hero. Oh, the man of the hour, the champ is here. The high smooch off the window as the buzzer goes off. The emotions, BBC champs. The big shot to win it. What are you feeling? I mean, this is awesome. This is why you come to Stryker. You know, playing games like this, the Stryker versus Pet Petzl rivalry, I mean, it's awesome. You know, and to hit a uh, shot like that, I remember when I was a kid, I uh, watched Luke Holsop hit a shot to send it into overtime against Petzl. You know, I always wanted to hit that shot, and you know, that's what you dream of as a kid. And luckily, you know, the coaches and my teammates had faith in me, and I, I hit the shot. How many times as a kid do you practice? Five, four, yeah. three, two, one. I mean, yeah, all the time. That's that's just what you dream of as a kid, and you know, and the fact that it's reality and I, it's just it's awesome. It's awesome. You guys were down all night, kept fighting over and over. How sweet is this to get this victory to win the BBC? Oh yeah, this is huge for us. I mean, we fought hard all year, and th this was our this was our goal at the beginning of the season. You know, we wanted a shot at the BBC. We knew we had a shot at the BBC, but we knew we had to beat a good pedestal team. And, Luckily, we pull out tonight. Well, congratulations. Let's get that half-court shot right here. Down there, the man of the hour, Jacob Cadwell. Oh, the hugs all around from everybody from Stryker. Here we go. Cadwell from deep. Oh, did he get it again? Oh, Jacob Cadwell, what a night for him. He will remember this forever, Randy. Oh, what a night for the Stryker Panthers. So after... Losing the title by a game to Pettisville in 2018, sharing titles with Pettisville in, 20, in 2005, 2015, 2019. The Stryker Panthers, the outright BBC champions as they defeat Pettisville tonight, 31-30. All around great game here in the birdcage. We want to thank everyone for making our night possible. Starts with Brian Leppelmeyer, the AD. Uh, also head basketball coach, a great staff here at Pettisville. Make sure that we're all taken care of. Got to thank Curtis Aldrich, guy behind the camera, getting all those shots, including the big game winner, and of course, our director tonight, Mr. Ken Reeker. What a fantastic night. Championships all around. Stryker wins the Buckeye Border Conference 31-30 over Pettisville. For my partner, Miles Holiday and our entire WOSN crew, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.